Hey guys, this is Cole from 100 Talk, and I have a quick video for you today about how I use Elgato's Stream Deck to create an esports scoreboard for use on my stream. Now, Elgato is the capture equipment and lighting provider for 100 Talk, and we're very grateful to them for that, but they didn't ask me to make this video. I simply found this solution and wanted to share it because I figure, you know, there's a lot of people who are doing their own casting nowadays, and if they're in Streamlabs like I am and they have more restricted options for um, how they can actually display and manipulate things on screen, this is extremely helpful. So I found this for me and I wanna share it with you. Now, let me show you the setup and the problem and why this is needed. Now, on our stream, we have a weekly community night where we play League of Legends, Valorant, Rocket League, and we have different teams of different viewers and they play a series of games all night. So we have to keep track of not just the team names, right, but the score of each game and uh, when they switch sides, so left side, right side, red side, blue side, attacker, defender, that sort of thing. Um, I need to be able to say, hey, the good guys won another game and update the scoreboard, or I have to say, hey, now the good guys are gonna go to red side and the bad guys are gonna go to blue side and flip the scoreboard like that. Um, this is not as straightforward as it seems. If you are in Streamlabs, for example, um, what you could do is you could have a uh, text file that says, okay, the good guys, they have won. And you could save that and use that as a display level. But the problem with that is not only do you have to update this by, you know, editing the score and hitting save, but if you switch sides, then you have to bring over the bad guys and type in their score, make sure you don't mess up their score and hit save and then make sure you flip the other one as well. And that'll show on stream, you know, like it'll update one at a time. And so for a while it'll say, you know, the bad guys twice on screen or whatever. So it's a, it's really clumsy. Plus it takes your brain out of your stream and, and um, changes what you're doing. And, and so for that reason, I don't like that solution. And I always wanted something a little bit more simple and more straightforward. So on our stream deck, we are able to do that. Now, um, I'll show you here a couple of plugins that you're gonna need. They both come from Bar Raider. Now, if you're not familiar with Bar Raider, you should visit his site. Um, he creates a lot of Stream Deck plugins that add insane functionality. Um, and I am very grateful to him because I use, I don't know, I think probably three fourths of the plugins I use on my Stream Deck are Bar Raider plugins. Um, so for him, we're gonna be using first uh, his Stream Counter plugin here. So I'll drop an instance of stream counter on here to show you guys how it works. Um, down here, you, the, the one thing that's super important for this is that you have to have a, uh, a file that you're going to set the score to. So in my case, I'll have team one score, right? And it'll ask me if I want to replace it, which in this case I do, because I already have it set up on this side, but I'll show you what the setup looks like. Um, you can drop any icon on this, just like anything else uh, to create a display thing. For me, uh, I like to do um, this. Now, it will automatically display the counter on the LED uh, if you want that. Now, I don't um, because it's on stream and I'm kind of like looking at my stream. So I just put a space in the name of it and that gets rid of the counter. Um, so as long as you have an instance of this plugin and you specified the file that it's going to output the score to, um, that should be just the setup you need for the first part of this. And you can do the same for the right. So another instance of stream counter, um, we will go ahead and specify that to be our team two score, uh, which we'll have here. And I'll just set the uh, icon on the LCD because I like to do that and it looks nicer and it's easier for me to read also, so I'm kind of a boomer. Um, so that's setting up the stream counter. now. So far, all we've done is we have a running tally, right? That's all we have. We don't have any way to put that tally somewhere else. Now it's outputting it as a text file, as we know we just went over. So we know where that text file is. Um, so let me uh, bring that here. We have team one score and we have team two score, okay? So, and the, they will show the running counters that we've, we've had. Now, as I mentioned, we have team names that rotate in every week too. So uh, what I have set up is a separate text file with the names of each team. So let me pull those up. Uh, I have team one being the good guys right here. And I have team two being the bad guys right here, okay? 
Now this, I can simply set up before the stream even starts. All right, so I just put the good guys in, I save it as team one name, save the bad guys as team two name, and I never have to look at that again, okay? Once I save it, even though we're going to be modifying the scoreboard, I don't actually have to go in and edit that file, which is very nice. So uh, what we need to do is combine the team name and the team score and output that to a different label that we can then display on our stream deck. And that's what we use the first example of Super Macro from Bar Raider to do. Um, so Super Macro, again, you can just uh, find it in the store here. I'll, I'll show you here. You can find it in the store. It's Super Macro by Bar Raider. Once you have that installed, um, you can drop an instance of it. Now, this is basically a way for you to create macros with code and then put them in on your uh, Stream Deck buttons. Now, this sounds more intimidating than it actually is. Uh, I'm not really a code guy, <laughs> but it's straightforward enough and there's documentation to go with it that kind of help you to sort through this and do what you need to do. And I'll show you my code, like I'll put the code in the description, I'll show you my code so that um, you can just copy and paste that and modify it for your use because um, it's it's really not that bad. All right. Um, so I have I call this button the commit button. That's what I'm doing because I am taking the team score and the team name and committing it to the stream. Um, so I have a file that is the t is the code to go with super macro for this. All right. So I have the add one for team one macro, that's what this is. And this code um, tells super macro what to do every time you push the button. Now, again, this is all documented in bar Raider stuff. It's great, you can read it and understand it. It's not that bad, but I'll, I'll go and explain some of it to you. So var set from file means it's going to uh, read what's in a file and store it in a variable named team one score. So here, this is my uh, file directory for how to get that score and save that into the variable. Okay, so team one score is here. That's up here in this text file. So it takes this text file, the contents of that, and stores it as team one score internally. Then it reads the same thing, team one name, and stores that in a variable called team one name. Okay, so it takes this and this, creates variables, and then there's a function to concatenate team one full score, the team one name, and, and that that's the variable it creates when you concatenate, by the way. So it takes the variable team one name, the good guys, adds some space, and then the variable team one score, okay? And creates that into team one full score, the variable. Then the final line of code is output to file, so it takes what we just concatenated together, the team one name, a couple of spaces in the score, and outputs it to this file directory. Okay, so team one full score. Okay, so that will, um, that will create the actual text that's used as a label in Streamlabs to display the scoreboard at the top. Now, obviously the same thing can be done for team two. So uh, I, you do have to save a, a separate text for this macro. So that's what this is right here. So everything is the same. It's this, the same functions. You just modify it to be uh, variables for team two. So team two instead of team one and team two score, team two name, um, but the same kind of setup. So once you have this code, which I'll give to you by the way, you can, you can then turn around and copy and paste it directly into um, into the super macro. So there's like a text file here that you can just put it in for a short press, or you can have it load from a file, which is what I do. Um, and so I, I save this. That's why this is add one team, one, add one team, one macro. And then I just specify that file, add one team, one macro. Okay. And the same for uh, team two. So I just make sure that file is specified here. So if I ever want to make any tweaks to the code, it'll just, I'll just save it in the text file and it'll automatically go there. So that now allows us to change the score. So that in and of itself, when I push this add one to the left team button, it updates the counter. 
but you notice it hasn't updated on the stream score, and that's because I haven't summed them together and committed them into the text label that I'm using in Streamlabs. So that's when I hit the commit button, and you'll give it a second and it'll show you that the bad guys is increased. And I pushed the button a couple of times, which is why it went up by two uh, instead of one. So while, as I was showing you, you know, I kind of made that change. But once you hit that commit button, it will um, show that score and update it on the scoreboard, okay? So it's very handy to have because now I can just push button, button instead of opening a text file, editing the text file, saving the text file, okay? So I already saved myself that hassle on stream. Um, the other issue is switching sides, okay? So how do I switch um, the two teams in their place when they change in between games? And it's a very similar solution, though the code is a little bit more complicated for that. So I have another instance of Super Macro here, and it's the same thing, it's just reading from a file. So I'll show you the contents of that file, um, which is some code that I, I wrote for it. And again, I wrote this code not really knowing how to code and basically just looking at the Bar Raider documentation, but it's already there for you if you wanna use it as well. So let's look block by block at this code. Um, there are three different blocks and they all do slightly different things. So in the first block, it's looking at the full score, so team name plus the score, and it's uh, it brings it in and saves it to a file where it switches sides, okay? So the first thing that it does is it takes those scores and switches them, and, and with their team names as well. But remember, that won't fix the problem down the line. That'll, that'll display it properly, but it won't actually um, update your old information. All that did is flip the summed files together that we made. So we need to address what's in the old files and update those for the next time we're using our counter plugin, okay? And that's what the next blocks of code are about. So in this middle block here, um, it's reading the, the previous score from one side, saving it as a variable, and updating the file on, on the other side with the old information, right? So it's like taking team one score value and copying that and pasting it into team twos since they're switching sides and vice versa. So it takes team two score and paste it into uh, team ones. And in this last one, it does the same thing, but with the team names, right? So we have our, our team one name here or team two name here and those will switch places uh, with these blocks of code. So that's all that these things are doing. And, and you, have to you have to get it in first, copy it, and then flip them and then save those text files. So all of that is automated. And that means that when you then return back to the game to add uh, one to the left team, it's adding it to the correct side as you would expect. Okay, so that's what that's all about. Now that code is is referenced in this instance of Super Macro here um, for Bar Raiders plugin. And that, I don't need an extra commit button. That flip sides, that script just runs and I don't have to um, do anything else with it. But really, that's the entire shebang. So uh, as I mentioned, this flip sides things, when I push it, and sometimes it takes a minute to do this, by the way. Um, sometimes it's a little quicker. But um, so bad guys and good guys swips, flop sides again. And then if I can push the plus one left and commit, and now it's still maintaining that the bad guys are the ones getting the points because they're the ones on the left side. So for this setup, that's it. And now you have it on your button. So you just need to remember um, when you wanna update the score on one side to push the plus one left or plus one right, and then the corresponding commit button underneath it. So you update the counter and then you run the script that will um, update your files, put it onto the stream, switch everything around. Um, and then everything happens in the background. There's no copying, pasting text. There's no remembering what the game score is. There's no showing the same team name on both sides temporarily while you're fixing it. All there is is you continuing to have fun and engage with your chat, your co-host, your stream. And Stream Deck is a product that allows you to do that more often. And I'm very grateful to Elgato for providing one for our stream. And uh, thank you as well to Bar Raider for developing excellent plugins uh, for use. Now, 
if you have an idea on how to solve this problem in a different way, especially in regards to Streamlabs, because that's a little more restrictive than OBS, um, please let me know in the comments. I'm always looking for uh, ways I can do better and ways I can make things simpler. Uh, for instance, one thing I'm looking for now is how to switch logos back and forth because uh, the current setup will only handle like text file output and not actually images, um, which you could do something like image containers in OBS, but not in Streamlabs. So uh, share ideas with us. We'll always be happy to see them. And thank you for watching. And I hope you enjoy your stream deck and that allows you to enjoy your stream. Take care.